I'm Richard Nongard, and I'm here today with Dr. Brad Smith, who's the president of Bakke Graduate University, and we're here to talk about transformational leadership. You know, Brad, a lot of people ask me, what is transformational leadership? And Bakke Graduate University is a school that really is at the intersection of uh, theology, uh, business, and ministry. How does the idea of transformational leadership get expressed at BGU? Well, you know, there's a lot of ways to define transformational leadership, and I can give you some excellent academic uh, definitions, but let me just start with something very simple. The idea behind transformational leadership is first, the person that's the leader is willing and open and taking initiative to transform themselves. They're reflecting on their own inadequacies, they're understanding their gifts, and they're building on the gifts, but they're constantly open to their own transformation. They're not, they're seeing how can I change through this and how can I improve? The second aspect of transformational leadership is they're serving others by carrying them to a transformational vision beyond that's better than what they're experiencing right now. Sometimes it's contrasted with some other forms of leadership, uh, transactional leadership, which is designed as I'm gonna give you something in return you give something to me where transformational leadership is saying, I'm willing to sacrifice something in myself, and you're willing to sacrifice something in yourself because together we're committed to a higher goal, a vision beyond e either one of us. No. Another, another thought is servant leadership. And uh, servant leadership is a wonderful field, but sometimes it's been miscommunicated as my job is to really serve your agenda rather than calling you to sacrifice your agenda to a higher agenda that both of us are sacrificed to. So that's kind of the difference between transformational leadership and what's often has been taught, although servant leadership covers a lot, servant leadership and transactional leadership. It sounds to me like this is a very useful concept, both for those who are studying ministry as well as those who come from a business background. Oh yes, yeah, it's uh, business, government, uh, church ministry, uh, nonprofit ministry. Transformational leadership is actually important in your family as a, as a dad. Uh, sure. When I demonstrate to my teenage children that I'm willing to change, I'm willing to grow, and I'm willing to sacrifice for a higher vision, they're listening to me a whole lot more than if I'm expressing authoritative leadership or other types of leadership. It applies in marriages, families, any, in any kind of organization. It's pretty major. Okay. My first exposure, uh, Brad, to transformational leadership was when I was trying to learn new business skills. As you know, I'm a therapist, and in private practice, I've built a fairly successful business, but I never had any formal business training. So I set out to find some resources that could essentially give me that MBA without the MBA. Sure. And so I came across uh, Randy Dobbs' book, mm -hmm. Transformational it's Leadership. It's a great book. And Transformational Leadership, as taught by Randy Dobbs, a former uh, General Electric mm -hmm. uh, executive at the time of Jack Welch, uh, really focuses on five things or five mm -hmm. elements. So first, building a culture within an organization, within a community. Uh, second, approving, improving uh, esprit de, uh, de corps. You know, the, the, well said. <laughs> a, a, a lot of people are within organizations suffer. Right. Well, it's our natural tendency, I think, to look at what's wrong rather than what's right. Yeah. Uh, the third element of his approach is uh, to communicate uh, issues and to communicate actions. Uh, I think that's fairly typical of transactional leadership, uh, but it's certainly a great strategy when it's taken in context of transformational leadership, which in the context of business changes the financial results. But all of this, uh, according to Dobbs, is predicated on then leaving behind a cadre of, uh, of future leaders who can carry on the transformational change that's taking place. And I think that's really one of the key uh, elements of transformational leadership. It says, not just how can I do this for everybody else, but how can I make this self-sustaining, whether it's in business, ministry, or, or industry, uh, so that people can take care of themselves. Absolutely, well said. In a business context, the principles that you described are, are right on. Another way that you can look at that in a business context is through Dennis Bakke's book, Joy at Work. And again, a different type of corporation than General Electric. Mm -hmm. Electric. And it was a very vision and values corporation, meaning very decentralized, probably one of the, the most decentralized companies we've seen in, in certainly our lifetime. But the way they accomplished transformational leadership and even building some of the things that Randy Dobbs talks about is by giving away the power to make decisions to people throughout the company. Uh, they had uh, 40,000 employees in 36 nations, um, 40 billion market cap, an energy company, the largest owner of energy in the late 90s. 
uh, outside of the nation of France or the nation of Russia, so the largest independent owner of electricity. And yet, it only had 100 people in headquarters. And transformational leadership was accomplished in that type of a decentralized environment, a little bit different than GE, but by giving power for people to make decisions uh, in their own setting, so that it was just decentralized, yet with accountability through the advice process. In the book, Joy at Work, uh, which was number eight on the New York Times bestseller in, 19, in 2008, shares a lot of the story of how transformational leadership occurred in that setting. And uh, at the current time, on the top of the New York Times bestseller list, is Dennis Bakke's new book, which is actually called The Decision Maker. Yeah. And I just wrote a review for that on Amazon, and it, it, it's a, actually a fictional account. Uh, it's, a, it's a story, so it's actually a pretty good read um, that is, is sort of uh, a collection of his experiences with the electric company and his experiences with the charter sure. school company, which he now heads. And boy, that's just a great, another great resource for people understanding transformational leadership. Now, here's my question, though. You talk about decentralization within the corporate structure. Can this work in a church? I mean, uh, most of the churches that I've uh, been to, Brad, uh, have a very strong leader who's been around for at least 2,000 years uh, who seems to have appointed the CEO uh, who stands in the pulpit every Sunday sure. and makes decisions. I don't think churches are typically known for this type of leadership. Is there an application? Well, there's, there's a lot of exceptions. There's some wonderfully healthy churches that are experiencing transformational leadership, but there's a lot that are not. Think about it, if you're my boss, and you're transformational leadership, and you're trying to give me decisions, the first thing you have to do is change your ego structure and your identity in order to give those decisions away from me. That's transformational sure. leadership. And then I've got to change my sense of responsibility that I don't, I want not only just the authority, but I have to have the responsibility and the accountability. I have to change my perspective as well to receive that. Well, now you take that to a church. That means the pastor often has to change their identity. They're there not just to help people, because many people that get into the pastoral role are great communicators and they love to help people. They really are motivated to meet needs. And all of a sudden they're saying, my job in, in the Bible, in Ephesians 4 is primarily it says, God gave the leaders to the church to equip the saints for works of ministry, which is actually transformational leadership. And so to do that, they have to begin to give up the decision making. And the way we describe it at Baki Graduate University is the church, first of all, as a name, is a confusing name. Because we say we're going to church. What does that mean? Church, according to the, the biblical definition, is a community of believers all discipling and working to grow closer to God. Sure. So how do you go to that? You are that, you know? And so when we say- we I always like those church signs that says, you know, uh, first Presbyterian church and then the small letters meets here. Meets here, yeah. But we, we really met in the neighborhood and our homes. Yes, we are gathered on Sunday morning, but when we're in our workplaces and maybe people from different types of churches are all gathered, that's a church scattered. It's still the church, it's community. And so when you're trying to equip the saints, Part of your job as a pastor is to say, a lot of my job is Sunday morning events, it's the weekend events, but so much of it is how I empower the church to be active in their workplace, the community. So the transformational leadership part plays out very well. You know, Lowell Bakke shared with me a great story of his church yep. and how they empower, how, how they actually ordained the high schoolers right. to go be ministers in their schools. Wow, what a, uh, what a, what a, I can't think of a better way to describe transformational leadership in the church. And for people watching this that may not know, Bakke Graduate University was named after four siblings. It's kind of a, an interesting story. One is Dennis Bakke, who is the head of uh, uh, AES, a very large electricity company. One was Ray Bakke, who uh, worked with Billy Graham to extend urban ministry really around the world. A third was Lowell Bakke, who is a pastor, but a very different kind of pastor a uh, really decentralizing decision in his church long before that was popular. And then uh, Marilyn Bakke, who is uh, a woman who teaches the Bible in amazing ways. And we wanted to display how women lead in powerful ways in urban ministry and churches, and uh, that was through the example of her life. Sure. And so the name Bakke Graduate University really is reflecting transformational leadership applied to businesses, to governments, to nonprofits, to churches, to a variety of environments and how that can be played out through both ministry degrees, business degrees, and urban study degrees. But transformational leadership is a thing that unites because every one of them has different languages and approaches. 
But that idea behind, I must be transformed first and be always open to be, trans, be transformed. And then I am not just following somebody else's agenda, but calling all of us to mutually sacrifice to a common vision and a common agenda that transforms society. Even sometimes that are with us sacrificing, sure. that's what unites it in every one of the sectors that we have degrees in. Now, it would be impossible for us in a short YouTube video to uh, explain every element or every aspect of transformational leadership. If you have any questions about transformational leadership, uh, Bucky Grazi University has zillions of resources uh, that we can send your direction. If you're interested in higher education, a master's degree or a doctoral program predicated on a foundation of transformational uh, leadership, please check out our website at www.bgu.edu or you can call Dr. Brad Smith or you any might, of our administrators. You might really ask about the, we have a doctorate of transformational leadership which is sort of a hybrid between a doctorate of business administration and a doctorate of ministry uh, that looks at models of transformational leadership around the world. And so I would love to talk to you about that if that's an interest. Sure. Again, uh, www.bgu.edu. You can also visit our Facebook group and talk to any of our alumni at www.bgugroup.com.